Uh, good afternoon everybody and uh, welcome to this um, talk um, focused around the solar eclipse that's occurring on the 21st of June 2020. Um, this eclipse, my name is Chandra Easton from Star Astrology Healing, Living in Light. Hmm, what I'm going to do is speak about the um, mundane and the esoteric astrology pertaining to this eclipse uh, that occurs um, on the winter solstice in um, the southern hemisphere in the north and the summer solstice in the northern hemisphere and as it pertains to uh, the great change that we're going through on Earth. Okay, so there's a few things that I notice. The first and most dramatic thing I notice is that the eclipse, that's the sun and the moon, are both seated in, seated in the sign of Cancer. Now, esoterically, the sign of Cancer is extremely interesting uh, because it is the sign of the zodiac from which consciousness, that is to say, soul awareness, our awareness of ourselves as more than a body, more than emotions, more than a mind, the fact that we are, in essence, soul and spirit. That this birthing of um, consciousness always occurs in the sign of Cancer. And so nought degrees at the very beginning of Cancer is, is like a symbol for the new humanity taking a first breath. So there's a very potent um, uh, symbol there of, of our birthing into new consciousness. Uh, but the sign of cancer is not only associated with um, the new birth and the new consciousness, it's also associated with the exit of, of souls, maybe millions of souls from earth who have completed their round of spiritual, um, th their series of lives on earth. Now why they've completed this could be for a variety of reasons. It could be that um, they've learned everything they need to know on earth. It could be that they, <clears throat> their future lives will be in a scheme outside the Earth scheme, somewhere else within our solar system. Uh, for whatever reason, the best thing to say about this eclipse at Nort Degrees Cancer is that there will be tens of thousands, maybe millions of souls who will be exiting, i.e. this is the last life they'll have on Earth, <clears throat> whilst... Others, let's pray that it's millions of souls, are awakening to the fact that they are souls. <clears throat> and there's also a third uh, possibility of this eclipse in the nought degrees of cancer. <coughs> Excuse me. And that is that there are souls who have had none or maybe just a few lifetimes on Earth who've never been part of the evolutionary experience experiment of the growing of consciousness on this planet. Um, souls from the angelic kingdom, souls from other star systems, star travellers, who will be coming to Earth in their, let's pray, uh, millions. So we have a major changing of the tide of who, um, which souls are completing their earthly incarnations, which souls are birthing into greater consciousness, and new souls who are coming in um, to assist us with this, this awakening, this profound spiritual awakening that's happening on Earth. It's pretty obvious to everybody who looks around that it's a hard birth going on. Uh, and of course the midwives are the angelic host and the divine mothers of the, the earth and the, the holy ones, the ones who go before us, who have greater consciousness, greater compassion. So we're not alone in this birthing. And of course it's dramatic and um, revolutionary and it's upending the status quo and all those things that we would expect as a birth occurs. Okay, I had a look at the uh, Sabian symbol, and this is a mythical, uh, mystical symbol that's associated with nought degrees of Cancer. And the symbol is a furled and unfurled flag displayed from a vessel. So when I sort of think about that or tune into that, I feel like <coughs> vessels um, display flags for all <coughs> for all kinds of reasons. It could be that it's a vessel in distress that needs help and then I start to think of some of the cruise ships that have been um, literally abandoned on the high seas or around 
the earth as because they're suspected or actually have um, a viral contaminants upon them. And and so there's a, an SOS in my mind that comes from this furled and unfurled flag displayed from a vessel. So I look at it that and I think, okay, well, in the midst of this um, profound spiritual awakening and birthing of consciousness and the entry and exit of tens of thousands or millions of souls, um, we need to give assistance where we're able to give assistance and we also need to be adaptable. Adaptability is the key word um, uh, for this degree of the zodiac. Now, eclipses always fall on a new moon, although not every new moon is um, an eclipse. This is a solar eclipse. And this particular uh, solar eclipse uh, fell very close to a town called Gangotri. Now, Gangotri sits on the disputed territories in the northwestern part of India on the territory with uh, China. Well, you would say Tibet, really, except that um, Tibet has been... Um, overtaken by China. So it's in a politically, strategically um, challenging position. Okay, and the the lines of the eclipse, that's the sun and the moon and the, the north node, meaning the destiny line, uh, they run smack bang through the heart of India. They go from the Himalayan plateau straight down through the heart of India and come down and, and touch uh, Sri Lanka and uh, end underneath in the Indian Ocean. So, uh, and again I have this, it's almost like, was it 1948 where India was um, divided and Pakistan was created and, and the division of one humanity who were Indians became um, East Pakistan, West Pakistan and India. So this eclipse seems to slice through the continent, the subcontinent of India. And I would imagine that it will bring a lot of whatever issues are unresolved around that um, separation of uh, the Indian people and the Pakistan people. It will bring them to the fore. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll just talk briefly. Uh, to the west, western side of um, West Pakistan and the western part of the subcontinent is where Mars and Neptune uh, slice through and, and we know that Mars and Neptune have a great deal to do with pandemics so I won't really talk about that except to say that um, of course you know many millions of people may have um, great difficulty in the subcontinent and also in East Pakistan and West Pakistan. I noticed that the Vulcan line goes straight through Calcutta and um, through through Bangladesh yes Okay, so, so um, the eclipse, so the spiritual awakening has a very strong focus around India and Pakistan, a very strong focus around Tibet and this sort of part of um, what is now China. The, um, the eclipse has got a connection with the Vulcan and therefore you could say there's a purification, a purification of attitudes, a purification of humanity going on. Now, all eclipses fall in a family. And the families have certain um, characteristics, just as your family or my family do. So the family of eclipses that this one falls in is the Saros series 137 North. And some of the keynotes to this family are that there are difficulties and restrictions and inhibitions and restraints, feelings of separation, being blocked, unable to move forward, and a lot of illusion, lack of truth, lack of clarity. So you've only got to look around you to realise that, that those issues that are currently there, I'm, I'm, what is it now, it's April, are going to continue. And I guess I would say that, that an eclipse, um, each one builds upon the previous eclipse. So the last eclipse was the um, Boxing Day 2019 and you can refer to that in my talk Planetary Landscape of 2020. And this, this next eclipse on the 21st of June 2020 will have an impact through the remainder of 2020, the second half of 2020, in through 2021 and in through 2022. So we could expect that this politically sensitive region of the disputed borders and the disputed territories where um, uh, Tibet, China, 
India and Nepal converge will be in great focus in the next couple of years. Okay, um, there's a, the Sabian symbol or the, the allegorical symbol for, for the position of this, this uh, family of eclipses when the family was first birthed back in the 14th century is a great musician at his piano. And I immediately think of the music of the spheres and how um, music has a way of elevating us and lifting us and soothing the soul and conveying non-verbally uh, peace and joy. So there's this beautiful uplifting energy. <clears throat> but of course not all music is beautiful and uplifting. Sometimes you know we have strong crescendos. Yes, and the keynote for this Sabian symbol is achievement. So I think the achievement, for me, refers to our opportunity to lift ourselves up above <clears throat> the chaos and the fear and the uncertainty and the confusion and the restrictions and the limitations and inhibitions into the joy, into the purpose. And the purpose is to elevate our eyes towards the light of our soul and spirit, to recognise that we are birthing as a new humanity. Okay, now even though the eclipse falls on the 21st of June, the three weeks before that and the three weeks after that are particularly significant. And this is referred to as the eclipse season. So the eclipse season goes from the 1st of June through till the 12th of July. So we're now the middle of April. Yeah, so we've got, was it six weeks or something? Until the 1st of June, that sounds right. <coughs> Yeah, now, now the thing to do with the eclipse season is to pay attention to the key global events that occur in that six-week window. For example, in the last um, eclipse, the um, coronavirus um, came out of Wuhan and out of China and moved through to the world, and, and that occurred along with lots of other things in that six-week window. So whatever are the major key global events. This could be to do with our health, it could be to do with um, safety and security in communities, it could be to, uh, to do with um, uh, economic recession or depression or any other factors that come up as pivotal issues in that six week period. We will then know that they will unfold over the next um, year or two or three. Okay, um, now I'll move now to the Ascendant and I notice that the 29th degree sits on, 29, yeah, 29 degrees and 30 degrees sits on every single house cusp in this chart. 29 degrees Virgo ascending, there's 29 and a half Libra on the, on the second house cusp and so on around the whole chart. Now when you have an eclipse that's full of 29s everywhere, it's it's the peak, it's it's the crescendo in the divine creative music. It, it's the a climactic crisis that is connected to humanity's evolution. So the evolution comes in the naught degrees of cancer. So we are assured that there will be a birthing of greater consciousness. We are assured that there will be a birthing of um, uh, the new humanity. We are assured that there will be many new souls coming into Earth to be, become part of the new civilizations. However, this will come immediately after, whether that's the next two or three years, or indeed over the next decade, after the crescendo of crisis. So we have a global systemic um, crescendo of crisis that affects every single person on the planet. And that is the 29 degrees. Um, that is everywhere. It's there in the destiny point, the north node. It's there in the past life point. It's there on the ascendant, the 29th degree. It's there on the midheaven. It's in every single house cusp. And of course, for the astrologers, I'm using the Kosh system, which I always use. So we could say that there will be a great crisis and a great reorientation and a great um, birthing moving forward out of crisis. So 
Yeah, if this was a child being born, there would be uh, many people assisting the mother and things would not go smoothly. The esoteric ruler of Virgo, uh, the sole ruler of the Virgo ascendant, is the planet Vulcan. I won't explain um, the specifics of that, but just suffice it to say that the pure, great purification is occurring in order to birth higher consciousness, consciousness of the heart. And not all souls who are currently on earth will be moving in this direction. Some are finishing their current series of incarnations and will be leaving to continue their spiritual evolution um, outside of the Earth's scheme. Others will complete a series of lifetimes and birth greater compassion, greater um, self-awareness, greater sense of sharing uh, and, and, and will take the evolutionary step uh, onto the path of, of spiritual light. And of course, because of the 29th degree that's everywhere, uh, there, there will be a crisis. So specifically, what is this crisis about? You, we could point to many things, but I think what I'd like to do is talk about um, the, the 26th degree of Gemini, where the fixed star Pollux is situated. Uh, now, Gemini is the sign of the twins, and from the Greek and the Roman mythology, there's, there's um, great... Um, there's great teachings that come to, can come to us about the nature of this crisis. Now, Gemini holds the, the separation, but it also holds the, the two aspects of our identity. There we are on a personal level, but we are also on a soul. And we have a relationship between our personality or our ego and our higher self or our soul or our compassionate heart. And the the spiritual birth can only occur on earth if we rise to the challenge of being the best that we can be. So the focus upon the, the, the divine twins, Castor and Pollux, is a focus upon the, the gap or the split or the separation between my personality and my soul, your personality and your soul, the personality of a nation and the soul of a nation. Lots and lots of variations thereupon. Okay, uh, one of the things that we know is that Gemini on, an, on a, um, an esoteric level is ruled by the sign of Venus. And, and it's true to say that uh, we need discrimination and we need to find truth in the middle of our, beyond our fear, beyond our illusions, beyond our doubt. And unfortunately, truth is always the first casualty of any war. And clearly there is a war going on uh, and the prize is the, the um, awakened soul of humanity. That's your soul, my soul, the soul of um, all those on earth. I'll talk a little bit about this mythology of the twins, Castor and Pollux. Now, Castor was the mortal um, twin and Pollux was the immortal twin. And they had two fathers I won't go into the whole mythology, but they were born from the same egg. But interestingly, there were not just two twins. There were actually, their mother Leda had, an, had two eggs and there were two children in each egg. Yeah? So Helen, we know Helen because of Helen of Troy. She was the other half, the divine immortal half of Pollux. And Castor had his own twin. Yeah, uh, and the 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 learning that comes from the relationship between the divine twins, Castor and Pollux, was that um, uh, Castor Castor passed away in a battle, and Pollux was was so broken hearted when he learned that that they were to be separated, and he was offered the gift of moving to the spiritual worlds uh, via a Zeus let's think of Zeus as Jupiter, to the Mount Olympus. So there was an opportunity for Pollux to separate from his other half, think of Castor as his personality, his ego, and to lift into light through separation. And he refused to do this. He went, no, 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 I will offer my life for my twin. So he stood by his brother 
um, he stood by his lower half and he he um, sacrificed his own gain for the greater good of his whole self. So we have an opportunity here for humanity not to separate and divide according to party lines or political lines or racial lines or economic lines, but to go, my brothers and sisters deserve life as much as I do. Our opportunity at this point in the second half of 2020 and beyond is to lift us all, to extend a hand to those in need so that we can, as one humanity, lift into greater light. What we're not meant to do is cast aside and separate and divide from the other. We are to have compassion for our own personal self, our own shadow, our own weaknesses, our own vulnerabilities and extend the hand and the heart of compassion to others who are in need. This could be someone in your family, it could be a complete stranger. Um, on a national level, we are the, the test, the spiritual test that's before us is about this extension to those who we, we would normally put in the other category. So in Australia, for instance, there's a lot of discussion around should we be helping people in stranded boats off the coast of our country or should we be sending them back to where they came from? Should we be helping um, the international students who have been here? Yeah? And of course the answer is yes, we are one humanity. I cannot lift unless I assist you to lift and vice versa. We metaphorically and physically need to be willing to offer our life for the sake of the other. And, and if we're able to do that in the midst of these very turbulent times, then of course what happens is that we will follow the myth of Castor and Pollux and, and, and there's, a good, there's a good ending to it. Um, Zeus in the myth was so profoundly affected by the fact that Pollux was prepared to sacrifice himself for his mortal twin that he placed both of them in the heavens. And of course they are the sign of Gemini. Okay. Yes, so, so this movement towards unity we are meant to move together and forward as one humanity reach out your hands uh, I discovered this morning that there's a mountain um, in the Pennine Alps between Switzerland and Italy called Pollux yeah, so it's uh, Pollux is associated with mountains now this eclipse has fallen in a very mountainous region on the edge of the Tibetan plateau. And mountains are a symbol for spiritual succor and spiritual support and spiritual maturity and um, accountability and responsibility. It takes effort to climb a mountain. And humanity are approaching the first great mountain, the mountain of the birthing of, of, of consciousness in the cave of our heart chakras and the way we will do this is to extend our hand to the other. We cannot lift if we fail to lift those around us. Okay, what else shall I talk about? Saturn's um, in early Aquarius in this chart but Saturn moves... Um, Hmm, let me just think about this. Yes, yeah, Saturn entered Aquarius on the 23rd of March and, and then by the 11th of May, it begins to move backwards, back, 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 back into to Capricorn. Yes, yes. And then moves forward a couple of times, it, retro, it goes forwards and backwards a couple of times throughout the year between the end of March, the middle of May, early July and by the 29th of September which you would note is um, All Angels Festival or the, the day that's particularly associated with Archangel Michael it moves forward and continues to move forward through Capricorn and on into Aquarius. Now when Saturn retrogrades and 
go stationary backwards and forwards over the course of a 12-month period between Capricorn and Aquarius. It's a bit like paying our debts and paying our dues in three stages. If you had a debt to a friend and you couldn't pay it all at once, they might say, OK, all right, we'll make the down payment in March. Yeah? Uh, and then we'd like the second down payment in July. And by the time we get... Uh, to the 29th of September can we have the third down payment so humanity have three opportunities for the down payment of karma uh, you know if I take that analogy of, of, of the birthing of consciousness and the woman birthing then of course uh, she's going to have to go through three stages in labour and she'll probably have to go through certain stages of acceptance and letting go and then there'll be certain stages of effort. So the beginning of the very significant effort for the birthing of this Christ consciousness in the cave of my heart and your heart and the heart of nations that commenced on Boxing Day last year and there's and of course there's a lot of effort and there's a lot of pushing that's associated with, with physical birth. And so 2020 all the way through until the 29th of September is about this effort invo involved in birthing ourselves uh, and refusing to say no to separation. Let's do what um, Pollux did and refuse to move forward without our brothers and sisters. We are going together forward okay um, and throughout 2020 and in the middle and the second half of 2020 there are three planets Jupiter Saturn and Pluto and they all sit in Capricorn and they're all retrograde um, so to have Jupiter Saturn and planet Pluto retrograde is uh, well I suppose a good analogy would be if you'd gone to the bank and said, I'm having trouble paying my debts and I need some help. And you'd explain your circumstances and they'd come, they'd say to you, well, let, we're going to ponder on it and we'll get back to you. Okay, so the, the spiritual leaders of the earth, not our political leaders, but the spiritual leaders of the earth are pondering upon humanity's ability and or willingness to pay our karma during the period 18th of May to the 13th of September, June, July, August. It's about a four-month period from the third week of May till the second week of September. There's a pondering as Jupiter, Saturn and Pluto are retrograde in Capricorn. And we need to tune in during that period um, to see how and in what way we are being asked to pay our debt. It is our debt. We have created the karma. Humanity have created the karma. We have walked away from our brothers and sisters in need. We have failed to respond to from the best that we can be, from the light of our souls, um, to lift our personal selves. And we have an opportunity to clear some of the indebtedness in this period, May through till the 13th of September. So tune in and pay attention to that. Um, Uranus is in Taurus uh, forming a fab fabulous sextile to Vulcan in Cancer. Now if this was an actual child being birthed, well my immediate response to it is that there's a life-threatening situation, look it could be the cord around the neck, and that intervention, high spiritual intervention or high medical intervention will be needed. Yeah? Um, it would be like a high forceps birth. So we have to reach out to our soul, to those who are ahead of us on the path, the spirit, path of spirituality, um, to ask for help in this birthing of our consciousness and the paying of our debt. We cannot do it alone. We must reach out and also hold and maintain the faith that life will come at the end of it. It's not the end of life, it is the beginning of life. Okay, um, one of the things that I notice is that there's a, uh, a grand trine uh, between Venus in Gemini, five degrees Gemini, five and a half Gemini, the ascendant at the very end of Virgo, and Saturn in Aquarius. Um, so this is the team 
and the networks of support and light that are around us that we can serve and we can draw help from. It is both the place where we give to others and the place where we receive uh, assistance. So an air grand trine is very useful. It's a lifeline in the middle of this chart. It's a challenging chart. Okay, uh, so the opportunity for this, and this, this lifeline will only be useful if we snap out of it and wake up and use our discrimination and connect to communities and share and network and, and recognise that everyone is our brother and sister. Everyone. Uh, it sort of reminds me a little bit of that um, children's story of Rip Van Winkle, who's, who's, I don't know how or in what way he fell asleep and he, he slept for a hundred years. Uh, there's a certain amount of our consciousness that's fallen asleep and we need to wake up and see the truth and see the reality and see who we can assist and see where we can share and see where are the other people who are awake and connect with them. Okay, um, Mars is in Pisces and forms a lovely sextile across to Jupiter and Pluto that are sitting in that tight conjunction in Capricorn. And the message from that is don't buy into the fear or the despair or the illness or don't become the pandemic, don't become the fear. Let go and let God. Learn to trust your higher self, trust um, the heart, trust your community. Strengthen your connection to the spiritual qualities of goodness, beauty and truth. Strengthen and anchor yourself within the heart and refuse to fall into the swamp of fear or doubt or misinformation or illness. Lift yourself. Okay, I think that's all I'll say. I, when I was tuning into this talk early this morning, I had the strong sense of that beautiful poem, Desiderata. And so I just include this here for you now. This has been Chandra East and StarAstrologyHealing.com. You can always connect with me to have a look at your future and where your life's going. And of course, have a look at my YouTube channel to see other talks that interest you. Or my website, there's a broad range of resources that you can access there for your own nourishment, nurturing, connection and awake awakening. Okay, that's all. Thanks. Bye for now. Desiderata by Max Herrmann Go placidly amid the noise and the haste and remember what peace there may be in silence as far as possible without surrender be on good terms with all persons speak your truth quietly and clearly and listen to others even to the dull and the ignorant they too have their story. Avoid loud and aggressive persons. They are vexatious to the spirit. If you compare yourself with others, you may become vain or bitter, for always there will be greater and lesser persons than yourself. Enjoy your achievements as well as your plans. Keep interested in your own career, however humble. It is a real possession in the changing fortunes of time. Exercise caution in your business affairs, for the world is full of trickery. But let this not blind you to what virtue there is. Many persons strive for high ideals, and everywhere life is full of heroism. Be yourself, especially do not feign affection, neither be cynical about love. For in the face of all aridity and disenchantment, it is as perennial as the grass. Take kindly the counsel of the ears, gracefully surrendering the things of youth. Nurture strength of spirit to shield you in sudden misfortune, but do not distress yourself with dark imaginings. Many fears are born of fatigue and loneliness. Beyond a wholesome discipline, be gentle with yourself. You are a child of the universe, no less than the trees and the stars. 
You have a right to be here. And whether or not it is clear to you, no doubt the universe is unfolding as it should. Therefore, be at peace with God, whatever you conceive Him to be. And whatever your labors and aspirations in the noisy confusion of life, keep peace in your soul. With all its sham, drudgery, and broken dreams, it is still a beautiful world. Be cheerful. Strive to be happy.